excited to show you this dear look for Halloween this year. If you're looking for more, I'll definitely link my other Halloween looks down below. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on new videos and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing you wanna do is start working on this headpiece for our deer. You only need a few things, sticks, a headband, glue gun, flowers to decorate with, and a Dremel. So here you can see I'm using the Dremel to basically sand the bark of the sticks off so that it gives that nice realistic antler bone kind of color. Each stick only took me about maybe like five minutes or so. You could definitely make this headpiece in one day. Um, basically I just searched around my backyard for different size sticks. I kind of knew the general shape that I wanted my headpiece to be in so that definitely helps. So I'm not out there looking for sticks for hours <laughs> or you can even break you could find one branch and just like break it up which i ended up doing actually there was this one branch that just was perfect for um my antler so i just kind of broke it up into different pieces two shorter ones that are fatter for the center these two that i'm working on right here are the longer wider pieces and then lastly you just want two thin kind of medium length pieces to go off of each of these longer pieces. I did do some kind of like sculpting as well while I was using using this Dremel. So for example, I exaggerated some of the bends of the stick. That's another thing you could do when you're looking for the sticks is try and find ones that have some character to them, you know? You don't just wanna find something straight up and down, you want curvature. Make sure the points aren't too pointy. You don't you don't wanna cause any accidents over here, make, make somebody bleed, and also the bottoms, sand those down so that they're nice and flat because that is what is going to be sticking to the headband. So the flatter it is, the easier it is to work with. Obviously my headpiece is abnormally large and I totally intended that. I wanted it to be huge. In fact, I would actually recommend for the longer pieces to not go this long. I did notice it was hard to walk through doorways and um, that might be a problem for you. So I would probably go a little bit smaller. But I'm honestly really proud of it. I love the way it turned out, even though it is so large. And um, yeah, it's just kind of personal preference, whatever you guys want to do. Also, make sure you're wearing protective gear while you're doing this. Glasses to cover your eyes and a mask to cover your nose and mouth so you're not inhaling this, as well as doing this outside for proper ventilation. All right, so moving on to the ears. This part was actually really fun to do. You just want to sketch out the shape of a deer ear on a piece of cardboard. I just looked at a Google image of a deer and tried to make it the same shape as what I was seeing on the image. And you just simply wanna cut that out. And for the other ear, you just flip this one over and sketch around it and again, cut it out. That way you have the same shape for both sides and they are literally exactly the same, just opposites of each other. So we're actually gonna use these cardboard shapes to trace out the same shape onto this fur that I found from Michael's. I have a darker fur that's gonna go for the back of the ear and a lighter fur that is for the front of the ear. Trace it out and cut it. Make sure you do not throw away this cardboard piece because I will be putting it back into the ear at the end, which you guys will see. Also save any hairs that come off after cutting label the front and back of both as well as which one's the right and the left so you don't get them mixed up same thing goes for the white fur you just place the front down of the ear onto the fur trace it out and cut it out so the front and the back fur sides Stick those two together with a needle and thread. You just simply wanna sew this together. That way when you flip it inside out, it looks more realistic. You could use hot glue, but I did attempt that in the beginning and it's just way too hard to work with with all of this fur. So I just ended up you know, saying, screw it, I'm just gonna sew it, which didn't take me that long, honestly. Um, you just wanna make sure that you leave a hole where you are going to be putting the cardboard back in and also so that you can flip this inside out, which I'm gonna show you guys right here. It's a little difficult to do, but you'll get it. The cardboard piece is gonna be a little too big because we did sew the corners. So what you wanna do is just you know trim those a bit on both sides. And then I used the end of this flower arrangement that I got at Michael's, cut that 
and glued it onto the cardboard that we had just trimmed. So again, redoing the steps over, you just wanna sew the ends of the ear together, fur to fur, leave an opening so you can flip it inside out and so that you can put the cardboard back in. So the reason I did the cardboard um, with the wire on it is so that it holds its bended shape when it's inside the ear because if you just bend the cardboard put it in the ear it could possibly you know become unbent over time but i wanted the bend to stay so i found that that wire definitely helped keep its shape and also if you just kind of glue the ears without putting anything in them onto the headband i feel like they just are kind of there the cardboard totally did the trick for me and then i just glued the ends together once i was finished so here you can see me putting the metal piece on again with the hot glue, bending it and stuffing that baby in there and then kind of like rearranging the cardboard once it's in, messing around with the fur, making the shape exactly how I wanted it. So once that's all done, then you can give your hair, not your hair, give the ears hair a little trim because the fabric that I found at Michael's wasn't exactly like a deer. I wish it was a little more orange, but that wasn't available, unfortunately. Um, so I just trimmed off the black so that way it was more brown. I left it a little bit longer on the very top ends of the ear and also at the very point of the ear. As far as the white fur, I didn't really touch that much. I kind of really liked it really hairy in the middle of the ear. So that pretty much sums up what I did, guys, for the ears. They're really cute and you can totally reuse them too for other costumes or cosplay um, ideas that you guys have. So this is the finished the finished look. Oh, also I forgot to say that I did hot glue a few of the like random pieces of fur that happened to come out while I was working on these ears. I glued the long pieces to the bottom of the ear, like right where it kind of rounds. And I thought that made it again, just look more realistic there. All right, so moving on to the antlers, I have this little paint kit that I got from Amazon. I'm using the brown shade here to darken the bottoms of the antlers, like right where they're supposed to basically go into the head. Now I did use like a ton of floral arrangements um, on the headband, so you can't even really see this. But if you decide to use smaller flowers or no flowers at all, which I thought still looks cool, then you can see this detail. So in case you wanted to do this, well, all I did was I just applied the dark brown first and kind of feathered it upwards and then I went through with black and I basically did the same thing and went over the brown to just kind of darken things up a bit. I only did that on the pieces that are supposed to be going into the head. This didn't really take much time at all, maybe like 10 minutes. Make sure you let it dry. I also did a wash of just water over the whole thing and blended that upwards to make sure that, you know, it didn't look like it was painted on. All right, so now it's time to glue everything onto our headband. I did use a pretty thick headband. Um, you don't wanna use something thin because nothing is going to stay on it long term. Like you wanna be able to wear this out for the night or however long you'll be wearing it for. Um, so make sure it's a thick one. Glue the ears onto the headband, then place a little marking where you want to glue the smaller, uh, well thinner, pieces onto this longer piece and hot glue those down. Make sure you hot glue everything really, really, really good. Like when you think it's hot glued down, hot glue it again because it's not good enough. You really are gonna be going through a lot of hot glue for this headpiece. You know, just because you wanna make sure that everything stays put. You worked so hard on it, you don't want it to fall apart through the night. So I used, again, a lot of hot glue for this. You wanna make sure to hold it in place for like a minute once you hot glue it down and then hot glue around it as well. If you wanna reinforce this more, you can use like masking tape um, to wrap around the headband and the antler to really hold it in place. 
and then start hot gluing everything down. It's totally up to you. I found that just the hot glue alone worked perfect for me. I wore this for a few hours the day that I filmed this video and I did not have an issue with anything coming apart. As far as where I decided to glue things down, I wanted the ears to be the lowest part of the headpiece and I wanted the bigger antlers to come out right next to the ear. So when you're gluing this next to the ear, if you want to do that too, make sure you're not gluing it into the hairs of the ear. Only glue it to the headband. Then once those are down, you can glue the shorter, fatter pieces to the very center of the headband. And yes, those are, those are a lot easier to glue down. So I, I realized that working on this on my table was not working out and I wanted everything to dry properly instead of like slowly falling off the headband. <laughs> so I put it on my little piggy bank that I got from Benefit Cosmetics years ago and it worked perfectly. I just kind of taped it down with some masking tape here so that it definitely wouldn't move and I could allow everything to set and dry properly while I decorated everything. So I got these little floral arrangements from Michaels as well. They were really cheap actually. They weren't even in the flower section. They were over off in some weird random place on like the very edge of an aisle I, I, I don't even I'm actually so happy I found them because the flowers in the front of Michaels are so expensive I started by placing the leaves down first in different colors I did end up taking the orange off at the very end though I just didn't want the orange I only wanted green and red for and pink for the look I feel like orange was just too much you can start gluing in the weird red long furry things and I also used berries because deers, deer, oh my gosh, I just said deers, deer <laughs> eat berries, right? Um, I also put some pink flowers down as well. When you're doing arrangements like this, or at least for me, I like to do the leaves first and then the flowers last. I also decorated the back as well with some longer leaves that I had randomly in my house. Um, on display and I took them off of the display and put them on my headband because it's more important, okay? Then to make sure that the headband stays on your head, this is a crucial step. You wanna use one of these comb-like things, which I got on Amazon, and glue that baby into the center of the headband. Okay, so moving on to the costume, I would recommend using a bra for this and not a bodysuit. Uh, just simply because it takes a lot less time to do a bra like this and then just to wear a nude skirt. Um, but this is my poison ivy bodysuit I had used last year and I just took all the leaves off it and decided to reuse it for this costume. So all you do is just glue down the same fabric you used for the back of your ears. Just trace it along the bra, cut it out, hot glue that down. Now for the very edges, like you can see I'm doing here, I just hot glued whatever random long pieces fell out while I was cutting and just press them gently onto the edges there. So that way it looks like the bra is completely made of fur. So same thing for the other side, just glue it down, cut it out, and hot glue some of the longer pieces on the edges, all the way from the outer to the inner corner of the bra. I did attempt to apply more fur to the rest of the bodysuit, but I just did not like the way it turned out. I didn't have enough fur because Michaels, I went back to Michaels and they weren't selling it anymore, so I had to basically work with the scraps I had left over from my ears and it just didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. So I'm just showing you guys this part because I think a bra is cute with, like I said, a skirt or something or, um, you know, whatever nude pants or nude shorts you have to pair it with. So then you just want to, again, like the ears, give it a little trim, make sure that the hairs are longer on the edges and shorter in the middle. Okay, so moving on to the makeup, I decided to do a straighter brow, a straighter, thicker brow because I feel like it just gives a more youthful appearance. I used number three 
Oof Proof Brow Pencil from Benefit Cosmetics to do this. And this is just kind of like a little rough draft sketch here. I did go back in later and darkened the outer corners up a bit with number four. So I am just kind of mapping out the edges of my brow here with a little bit of Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. And then I'm also putting this on my eyelids and using it as an eyeshadow base to help my eyeshadows last longer throughout the night. ABH palette and Soft Glam here has the most perfect browns for this dear look. Going in with Rustic, a medium brown first, into the inner corner of the eye. Working this through the crease, a little bit like to the middle of the crease, but not too far out. I'm mostly just focusing this on that very inner corner of the crease going into where my nose contour would be. Then I'm picking up Cypress Umber, which is a dark brown, a dark matte brown, blending this through the inner corner as well of the crease with a really, really small fluffy brush. Going through now with Noir, which is a matte black, and a very, very tiny pencil brush. I'm working this in the deepest part of the inner corner of that crease there and just blending that through. So now that we got the deeper set eye look, you can use Tempura, which is the lightest shade from the palette. It has a little bit of shimmer to it, but it is a great lighter shade to put down on the lid, and it's really going to help enhance that darker, deeper crease that we just worked on. Winging out Rustic on the lash line, going from inner corner all the way out, just doing a really nice blended look with that and then i'm going through with cypress umber going over that and lastly noir the matte black applying that close to the lash line so you're essentially doing exactly what you did in the inner corner of the crease to the lash line it's a lot easier that way i also highlighted the brow bone with tempura and i extended tempura out past my natural eye shape as well a gel eyeliner in a matte black shade. I'm using this one from e.l.f. and I'm applying it like I usually would, just doing my normal winged eyeliner from inner to outer corner, but make sure you're not covering up all of the work you just did with all of the blending on the lower lash line. So kind of keep it relatively thin. I use these awesome spiky glam lashes that are from Ardell. I can't remember what the style is, so I'm gonna go figure that out and put it in the description box down below. Um, but I've worn them before and I really love them and I thought they'd be perfect for this look. Bronzing up my face with the Saint Tropez Gradual Tan Tinted Instant Healthy Glow Everyday Moisturizer and Primer and I'm using for my foundation today. Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation in 3C1 Dune, and just patting that all in with a Real Techniques blending sponge. I really like this foundation because it gives a nice full coverage. I also applied a concealer under my eyes, basically the center of my face, you know, down the bridge of my nose, Cupid's bow, center of the forehead, and chin. Same concealer from the beginning, Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in Light Neutral. Setting that down with Lancome's Setting Powder. And now it is time to contour. So this is the Shade and Light Palette from Kat Von D. I'm using the lightest shade and working that under the cheekbones to help give it some dimension. Also applying this down the bridge of the nose, but I'm applying it a lot more on the sides of the nose than I usually would. I am applying a mixture of Hoola and Hoola Light now with an It Cosmetics brush that I love so much. I have to link this down below for you guys. This brush is amazing for applying bronzer. I'm working about like three layers of this mixture onto my cheekbones to really bronze things up. And I'm going over on the apples of the cheeks with the Anastasia Powder Bronzer in Rosewood. Setting the makeup with Seat London Dewy Spritz Setting Spray. 
letting that sink into the skin for like a minute or so and then I'm going through with this, this <laughs> with this highlight from Anastasia the glow kit in sun dipped I'm mixing the two lightest shades together applying that to my cheekbones bridge of the nose and collarbones so first I drew the shape that I wanted on my nose with a lip pencil from Gerard Cosmetics in Mudslide. And then I used the lightest shade, the lightest contour shade from the Kat Von D palette and just blended out the edges with my finger. As you start blending, the lip liner will kind of smudge out a little bit and look a lot softer and you can work it up along the sides of the nose towards the crease that we had did that's like nice and elongated in the inner corner there. Dark brown eyeshadow in the very center of the nose. Worked through a little bit of the peachy shade from the Kat Von D palette just to kind of soften things up on the sides of my nose so the lines weren't so harsh. NYX Wonder Pencil in the waterline to widen my eyes. And going back to the Soft Glam palette, I'm literally using the exact same shades we did on the top lash line. So working through Rustic first from inner to outer corner. And I am leaving a nice little gap in the inner corner there. Sorry for the ambulance. <laughs> um, then going through with Cypress Umber once Rustic is all blended out. Cypress Umber towards the outer corner of the lower lash line and also in the inner corner as well. Then going through with Noir on the outer corner and inner corner as well, and tempura in the inner corner to help brighten things up again. So here I'm going in with Noir. And that's about it, guys, for the eye look, besides a little bit of mascara on the top and bottom lashes. Okay, so for the spots, all over the face and body, I used one product from Mayron. I believe that's how you say it. It's a white face and body paint. You just activate it with water. I'm using a tiny little lip brush from e.l.f. Cosmetics to dot this onto my face. Basically just working this on the face like little freckles. You wanna make sure that they're not all the same size though. So draw some that are large, some that are medium, some that are tiny little specks that you can barely see. Accentuated the nose a bit more by drawing this white on the very tip. I also put the white in the inner corners and along the cheekbones. So again, you just wanna make sure you're doing different sizes because that's when it looks more realistic. You don't want every single one to just be like a tiny little speck or you don't want every single one to be huge, like <laughs> big circles on your face. I was a little nervous to do this at first just because it's like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't even know where to begin with this, but you just, just go for it, you know? Just make sure that you don't have big ones all clustered together or small ones are all clustered together. I can't speak. <laughs> Going through with number four on my brows there to darken things up and give a little bit more definition. And then after bronzing up my body, I applied the white Mayron face and body paint to my shoulders, working it up onto my traps as well as the sides of my neck and I did that on both sides. When you start working on your other side, it's a little bit hard to kind of maneuver around and get the spots where you want them with your dominant hand. Some of the spots like my back especially were a little bit harder to reach so I had to switch hands and start making circles over there with my bad non-dominant hand and I'm like, man, those circles look bad. But <laughs> Nobody, I don't think anybody notices except for me. If you wanna do spots all over, like especially on your back, just, just have somebody help you draw the spots on. I also kind of started doing the spots down my arm instead of only on my shoulders and neck. I wanted it to just like basically trickle down to my elbows. So that is it for the spots. Of course, you can do more if you guys wanted to. Um, for the lips, I used Ofer Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in Dubai first. Gerard Cosmetics Lip Pencil in the inner corners, smudged that out, and that was in Mudslide, the same one we used for the nose. 
Then I apply a little bit of dark brown shadows over top from the Soft Glam Anastasia palette. Moving on to the hair, bald cap, to keep my hair down and also give my wig something to attach to. My wig is from Amazon, I used it last year for my Poison Ivy look. When you're putting your headband on your hair or your wig, make sure that that comb we glued in is really in there good and you won't have an issue with the headband falling off at all. For the actual hairstyle, I decided to do two braids on both sides. So one braid that's closer to the ears and pin that all the way in the back. I just did a regular braid and then for the second braid, I decided to slowly add hair in to the braid from the bang section and then pulled that back, pinned it in place. I just really like the way that looked instead of two braids that look the same. I have like one water, is that a call? It's not a waterfall braid. I'm not really sure what the second braid is called. But yeah, I just wanted it to feel like kind of nature-y and like bohemian kind of vibe. I ended up also pinning my bang, some of the bangs back as well, but I didn't catch that on camera. Um, but what else? I think that was basically it. I love the way that this look turned out. I have been envisioning this in my head all month. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below. Please leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. I will have down below a playlist of all my previous videos from Halloween for you guys to watch. If you end up doing any of my Halloween looks this year, please take a picture of it, send me a photo, and tag me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. I'll have all my links down below. Hope you guys have a great and happy Halloween. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.